Good morning, and how are you today? I am fabulous with my cup of joe, finally. I used my machine. I'm starting to figure it out. Yesterday, I didn't put enough in it. Today, I probably put a little too much. It's all about finding balance, <laughs> right? I'm an idiot. Hopefully, you had a great day yesterday, and hopefully, you'll have a great one today. Um, this is what I get for staying up until 5 o'clock, roughly. Just goofing off. Just being a dope. <laughs> ah, it's all about getting a schedule back together. Anyway, bye-bye, Governor Cuomo, huh? See you later, cowboy. Golly, what a clown. What an absolute clown. And he is a, a perfect example of a couple of things. Number one, he is the example. First of all, let's go back and look at what this 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 dope did. I mean, first of all, his his uh, actions during the COVID, the beginning of COVID, reprehensible. Absolutely, one hundred percent reprehensible. But he gets a pass. Why? Because he blamed it on Trump. That's the thing. And I knew that was coming. I knew that was coming two years before this election, three years before the election. I knew that if the Democrats were going to win, all they would do for the next five years is blame everything on Trump. Trump, 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 Trump. No personal accountability for anything and always getting a pass from a media that propped him up and propped up the rest of the Democrats at the expense of those of us sitting here going, can somebody give us some balanced information, please? <laughs> we know you don't like Trump. Why is this clown getting a pass? What he did during the beginning of COVID is reprehensible, putting older people back into those, those homes. It's reprehensible. But he wrote a book. Apparently, he was, he was propped up by the media, the Brian Stelters of the world, and other jackasses, as some sort of model hero, because was, everything was about comparing him to Trump. They could compare a pencil to Trump and make the pencil wonderful. I mean, it, it didn't matter, because they hated Trump with such a deep hatred. It's sickening. And there were other things. There are plenty of things that you probably didn't even hear about. And I'm not going to get into them. But the, the most obvious one was the one that got his, his ass out of office. And that was the, uh, the, 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 uh, the stuff with all the women, the touching, the groping, all of that stuff. And then trying to blame it on culture. Oh, fuck you. Go kiss my ass, you piece of shit. I, I don't go out there. I'm, I'm half Italian. I don't go running around touching people, holding them, kissing their face. Quote, who's saying Bella, whatever that, screw you, you piece of shit. Sorry, makes me angry. Makes me angry because when, when people like him, privileged people, and we're going to get into that, pass off their actions on culture, we suffer. Okay? We suffer. We're the ones that suffer from that kind of nonsense. Oh, and you want to talk about privilege. Daddy was governor, right? Mario, another one, whatever. His his little brother, ugh, repulsive clown Chris, right? Who's who's a news person? He's a news guy. <laughs> yeah, he's news. He's he's a reporter. Like I'm a fireman. Please, please, a guy who sat there and told us you got to stay inside. And da, 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 and when the whole thing started, da, 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 and you're 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 bad if you don't wear a mask. And what does he do? <laughs> he runs off. <laughs> riding his bicycle without a mask on when everybody else was locked down. What a piece of shit. But we prop these clowns up. We prop these clowns up. We do it. It's our fault. And going back to going back to the older brother, the media prop this guy up. And when you only consume one media outlet because you're a partisan and that's all you're interested in, you only get half of a story. Now, I'm not saying he, he ha didn't have successes. All politicians, I'm sure the vast majority of them have at least some successes. But it, it's insane. It's insane. The, 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 this guy wrote a book. And people bought it. <laughs> they bought a book from Andrew Cuomo on how wonderful a job he did while he shoved senior citizens back in senior citizens' homes and the death toll was in the tens of thousands. Oh, screw him. Screw him. While telling people he gets to touch women, that's part of his culture. Oh, it's, it's unbelievable. But, folks, let me give you someone else who is the, uh, the face of privilege and what the biggest problem in this country is, and that's classism. Racism exists. Misogyny exists. All these things, all the other isms do exist. I'm not saying they don't. But the biggest problem is classism. Period. 
Cory Booker, senator from New Jersey, okay, black dude, former mayor of Newark. Oh, how come you're dogging the black guy? This isn't about dogging a black guy. I don't do that. I'm talking about an individual. Let's take that and put it to the side. We're talking about an individual whose parents were airline executives who went all to, to all of the nicest schools. I couldn't do that. My parents couldn't afford to send me to, to, to friggin' academies that cost tens of thousands of dollars a year back in the 80s. <laughs> Are you kidding me? All the privilege that you get when your parents have money. Folks, that's that's has nothing to do with race. Nothing to do with race. Is it harder to get there? Too many numbers to say that there's not something going on. I don't know what it is. I hope it's, I, I want to stop it. If there is something that's baked into the cake as it related to that, I would love to get it out of the cake. I think a lot of us would. I think most of us would. I'm sick of this nonsense. I'm sick of people being held down. But here's the problem. If we dig in real hard, I'm wondering if the party that thinks that the party that claims to be the, the the ones for race aren't kind of baking the cake themselves. I don't know. You may want to be real careful here. Anyway, classism. It's all about that right now. It's about the eroding of the middle class, destroying the middle class. So there's only two classes and we have to look up to the elites. Give us stuff, please. Please give us stuff. We love you. Take control of everything. Education. Healthcare. Take, take control. Oh, go to hell. I, there's no way I'm into this. None. These people have too much power over us as it, as it is now. And we're going to give them more? Through a system that was devised by Karl Marx. And, and that is the force behind this, folks. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if you don't want to believe that. But you got to have the guts to, to break this down one thing at a time and see this. That critical race theory, a big, a big component of it is Marxism. Whiteness and blackness. Just regurgitated oppressor and oppressed. A system that doesn't take the middle class into account at all. Because I said this before, and it makes me laugh every time. If you're going to tell me my dad, who struggled to stay in the middle class, he was a lower middle class guy. If you're going to tell me that he was an oppressor, oh, Jesus. <laughs> guy worked in, he was, he worked in factories the last 25 years of his life. Broke his ass to feed his wife and three kids. He was an oppressor? Are you serious? Are you kidding me? Golly, it's so dumb. So anyway, getting back to Mario's kids, <laughs> we have to stop propping people like this up. And even if it's people that we like, there's a couple of pundits that I watch that are, that are kind of funny, but they're just people. They're just people. They're not special to me. I don't need them. I don't even listen to what they say. Hold on. I just, I just like the fact that they make me laugh. I don't agree with them most of the time, even. Especially if they're partisans. I, I just... I don't. But look, the true privilege in this country is, is, going, is going to be elevated through classism, not race, not gender, not any of that nonsense. People in power that want more. People in power that will use crisis like this, this pandemic, to seize more control. And then we'll sit there and say, oh, it's no big deal. Oh, no, they just love us. They just want us to be safe. And then 25 years later, you have what's going on in, in Eastern Australia right now around Sydney. It's not the whole country, by the way. I was I was wrong about that. I want to apologize. A couple of days ago, I was talking about it. It's not the whole country. Excuse me. Apparently, the western part of the country is just like, yeah, whatever. We do what we want. <laughs> but the eastern part of the country, Sydney. Oh, boy. You watch the cops and the way they act out there. Holy crap. Man, you want to talk about dystopia. It's, it's, it's watching it. You're like, how did that happen? Well, part of it is an ideology that removes the middle class. <laughs> and people just being okay with it. 
Here's my guns. We love you. Take them away. Protect us, Australian government. Now stay in your houses. <laughs> but we love you. Get the fuck out of here. There's... It's all about class control and class warfare and people making sure that it happens. And we're the ones that get screwed. I don't care if you're black, white, brown, whatever. Anyway, we're going to do what we got to do. I love you, man. I really do. I really, really do. Even Mario and, and Andrew and Chris, just because I'm repulsed by the actions Man, there's always hope. There's always hope. Anyway, I'm going to get on with my day 10 minutes. You have a wonderful, wonderful day today. I love you. Enjoy it.